Good day, everyone. Finally, we are gradually starting to see more and more people each day coming out of the COVID-19 virus lockdown and enjoying their freedom. And again, to eat in restaurants or outside or on the patio. And fewer people walking, walking without those face masks is something we welcome. Here is something I want to, you to think about. By looking at all of you people who are out here, I wonder how many of you would feel or react if you happen to do something a favor, someone a favor, and this person does not show any appreciation towards you. Let's say this, this as an example. You saved someone's life from drowning, and once you got that person out of the water, this person just turns around, walks away without even saying thank you for saving my life. I guess you would not like it. Or how would you feel if you get robbed by someone on the street and there, there is a police officer nearby and sees the whole thing and just stand there and just does nothing to, to your, come for your rescue. You will just probably demanding some justice. Or how about if your house is burning and the fireman just watched it burn and does nothing to put it, to put it out. You would definitely be very angry, would you? Well, my friends, this is story, as I've been telling you, is it exactly the similar to what we do to Jesus Christ? The one who died on the cross for us all to save us from drowning in the lake of wickedness and bring us out of the darkness of the deep and help us to come out into the light and have eternal life. The one who shed his blood for us on the cross and if by receiving him as your savior and you repent of your sins, believe and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be washed from all your sins in his precious blood and be saved. It is only through Jesus Christ and this can be done accomplished. And he is the only one who can save us from drowning wherever in the lake of fire. For him to do all that for us, is that the way we should treat him for what he has done to us all? Just like what these example I've given you and the way he is treat and the way he has been treated would make anyone angry and want to do something about it. He gets no honor, no glory, no respect no thanks, no consideration or appreciation, just blaspheming constantly his name every day and cursing him in the most disrespectful way that, any, that anyone treated you that way. You would want that person to, be get, to, be, to get arrested for bullying you. Why are the churches not rebuking those professing Christians or any other who do not believe in God and yet uses his name in vain? All we do is raise our fists at him, telling him, you will not rule over me. I will do what I want to do and do it my way. And you are not going to show to me how or tell me how or what to do. People don't even give one minute of their time to 
even thinking of him or say grace at every meal that they have. No offering thanks for the food that is on the table that he is giving them every day. So they do not have to go hungry or thirsty. Don't even say thank you for the availability to choose from the different kind of food we can buy at the, at the grocery store or supermarket. When there are so many countries in the world don't even have what we have. Many go to bed hungry and thirsty. We receive so much from him and yet we don't even thank him and we don't give him anything in return. What a shame. Much will be demanding from us at the end if we do not repent. We don't thank him to create us and give us life. Before the foundation of this world, he knew you back then that you will be created, which is a very good sign of how much he loved you. He loved you first. Why do, why do you not love him back? He is offering you a free grace of salvation for the sinful world where he calls you to come to Christ in order to make it to the Father. Without him, there is no hope to be saved. We are all sinners and we will always be condemned that if it wasn't for the sacrifice of the Jesus Christ and the sac sacrifice that on Calvary. Do you know who is the most hated man in the entire world? And has been hated for many years in the past as well and will again in the future. Well, it is Jesus Christ, my friend. That is right. And many of you who are hearing this couldn't care less about it. So sad and shameful and inconsiderate. That is the reason why I'm out here today. It is to preach the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Most of you probably never heard of it. You should because it is very important to know. Why I am here today, you ask? It is because, firstly, I love God, I, and I want to glorify Him, to praise Him, and worship Him. And secondly, I love my neighbor as myself, and I want the best for them in, in the afterlife, and want to prepare them for they will be ready to face Jesus Christ on the day of judgment. That is why. It is not what Jesus said that we should all do in Matthew chapter 22, verses 36 to 40. You need a permit Teacher. to amplify. You need a permit. I'm calling the city now, so. All right. What is the first commandment that I He said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And, and the second one is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law in the prophets. As a true Christian in Christ, who is a Bible believer, Bible obeying, born again Christian, it is my responsibility and duty to spread the good word of God to everyone who is out there and make them disciples of Christ. You all desperately needed to hear his words, which he commands me to do, and that is what I am going to do. In Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And know I am with you always, even to the ends of the age. Amen.
Make a part. How much did the speaker cost? Oh, I don't remember how much. Probably thirty dollars. I got it on the internet. Check it on the internet, and you'll find out. Give and commit. This great commission has been given to me to be a witness of God's love. He has told all men and to tell them that he is offering an amazing free gift of grace of salvation to every one of you. It is available right now as I speak. All you must do is accept it and believe. Take this offer now. Salvation is today, not tomorrow. You do not know when you could die. You could die today, tonight, or tomorrow. <laughs> Your life is but a ba vapor that appears for, for a little more time, and then it vanishes away. Jesus Christ wants you to have everlasting life and be with him for he loved so much that he gave his life on Calvary that you could be forgiven from your sins. John chapter 3 verses 16 to 21. It is the most popular verse that is known so well throughout the, everyone in the entire world. And I will quote it to you. Yes, listen to this very carefully. You heard it many times before. John chapter 3, verse 16 to 21. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world, and man you love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. For everyone practicing evil, it is, hates the light and does not come to the light. This less is the less be exposed, but he who does the work comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. What is life? The Bible talks about being nothing but a vapor. It is here for a little while and then it is gone. Life is so short, you know it doesn't last. Jesus Christ lives forever and he wants you to live with him forever. He wants you to spend his time with him for eternity because he gave his life that you could be redeemed. But what separates us, what keeps us from serving God, it is sin. Sin separates us from serving God and have a right relationship with Him. And that is not God's will. His desire that we be forgiven and change and transform so we be made, be like Him, to walk with Him. Every one of us can experience the eternal life. Every one of us can be forgiven. We can have our sin, our hearts forgiven and transform. That's what Jesus is, was able to do for each one, each one of us. Don't you want to experience life everlasting? Will you? Well you, well, you can, if you want to walk with Jesus, talk with Jesus along the way. Is your heart made right with God? He loves you so much. 
and his only desire is to redeem you. His only desire is to help you to walk with him. He is not willing to anyone should perish, but that all should come to repentance and live. Will you come to repentance? Will you come and know that everything is right between you and God? Will you live with God forever and ever? Will you spend eternity with the Lord? Will you? Will you can? Jesus Christ loves you, and he made a way for our hearts to be made right with him. He did not just leave us to fear leave us to perish in sin, but his desire that we would come to know him. In order to be forgiven, we must take the time to see God. We must take the time to know him. Take the time to know and our sins are forgiven. Are your sins forgiven? If you stand before a holy and righteous God right now in judgment, how would you do? You know, before I came to Christ, before I was saved, and before Jesus Christ made that change in my life, you know, there were all kinds of things that I would have been on my slate before God. The wickedness of my life would have been brought before God. I would have been found guilty of sin. I would have perished. I would not have been granted entrance into heaven. But there came a time in a place where Jesus Christ made that change in my life. He made that change in my life. Because of that, I am a different person now. I'm a changed person. I am no longer lifting up myself, but I'm telling you about Jesus Christ that changes life. Jesus Christ that delivers from sin. He changes the hearts of men and women and children that come to him. And if we come, confess our sins to him, he promises to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He said, repent and that your sin may be blotted out and be converted those times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. He said to repent and believe the gospel. Many people here say they believe the gospel, but they have never repented. And you see, without repentance, we cannot fully believe in Jesus Christ uh, for salvation because there is something standing in the way between us and God. And God's desire is not that there be anything between you and Him. God desire that you will be set free. You see, Jesus Christ is the only way that could forgive your sins. And that He desire that you would come and ask for Him. His desire that you would have your heart changed that you would have your heart transformed by his power. Why did God have to give his son? You see, because we sin against God. And because we sin against him, we separate ourselves from God. And there must be a price for sin. The way the just the wage of sin is death. The Bible says, but the gift of God is in Jesus Christ. And we can't have eternal life with Jesus Christ. And that takes a willful effort on our part to confess and repent of our sins and come to Jesus Christ for our salvation. I encourage you to do that very thing. Come to Jesus Christ for, salv for salvation, my friend, before it's too late.
praise the Lord. Many people out here are dead in their sins. They don't even know about it, and unfortunately, and they're on their way to straight to hell. They think they are good enough to make it to heaven. But sadly, you are mistaken. Many are walking on the wrong path, which would lead them to condemnation and destruction of hellfire. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, verses 13, Enter by the narrow gate, or wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. A lot of you who are walking by me do not know God, let alone have ever read the Bible. That is why you need the street preacher to come out and tell you about what the Bible says and what you need to hear. Not what you want to hear that suits your lifestyle. I will, they know, I will they know if there's no one gonna tell them. Roman chapter 10 verses 14 and 15. How then shall they call on him in whom we have not believed? And how they shall believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how they shall hear without a preacher. And how shall they preach on sale unless they are sent? Uh, like I said, how beautiful are the feet of those who preaches the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. Some of the things you will hear, really you might not like to hear it, but it has to be heard every day, every month, every year so as not to lose sight of the truth. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 2 to 4, preach the word, be ready in season, out of season, convince, rebuke, and exhort, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come where they will not endure the sound doctrine, but according to their own desire, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and return to fables. Do you want to know how to be saved and how to have eternal life? Well, stick around and find out. Or if you do not have time to listen, then read God's Word, inspired Word of the Bible, and you will find all the answers what you are looking for and the message that you need to know and understand about His wonderful master rescue plan of redemption. He uses to you to save us from our sin. Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. All scriptures is given by inspiration of God, and it is, it is profitable of doc, for doc, doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness, that the man of God will be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. God does not want to see you to go to hell, friends. He wants you to come in and be part of his family and have ever relationship with him in his kingdom for eternity. Ezekiel chapter 33 verses 11, say to them, as I live, say the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his ways and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways, people, for why should you turn from evil. We are all sinners, that includes me as well, and came short for the glory of God. And in order to make it to heaven, I will sins have to be washed away. 
and that can only be done by the atonement of his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, who shed his precious blood on the old rugged cross of Calvary and died, rose again, and on the third day, defeating death to save us from our sins and have eternal life. Because there was no way our sin will be forgiven. We can't do it ourselves. That is why the, that is why the sin that Jesus Christ came from heaven down to his creation. He came sin and took up our punishment that we so rightly deserve and suffered the consequences of our sins on our behalf so that we might be saved and have eternal life. All we need to do while we have time is to seek him now, while he is still can be found and repent of our sins, because there will be a day when it will be too late. Isaiah chapter 55, verses 6 and 7. Seek the Lord while he may be found, Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways, and the unrighteous man is taught. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Acts chapter 17, verses 30 and 31. Truly, these times of ignorance God overlooked, and but now commands all men everywhere to repent, because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man who he has ordained. He has given him the assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. And that is Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 4, verses 12, Nor there is salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. In Philippians chapter 2, verses 10 and 11, that acts the same of Jesus. Every knee shall bow of those in heaven and of those on earth, and of those under the earth, and that every town, tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Yes, this man I'm speaking of is Jesus Christ, the one and only Savior who can save us, and no other name that we can have can do it or any other religion can save us. It is through, it's only through Jesus Christ. Jesus says on John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It is a very intolerant statement to make, a very impolitically incorrect statement to take, but it is an absolute true statement that Jesus making here, and there is no other religion can save you, but only through him. Did you know that the prophet Isaiah pre predict the coming of Jesus Christ to salvation of mankind from sin 700 years before the birth of Jesus Christ? And here people say that the Bible was written by man only. Well, it proves it. It was inspired by God. How can Isaiah ever know about the, what Jesus Christ was going to do through unless God told him? It was done accurately uh, uh, the way he predicted to happen, right to the letter. Here is what he said in Isaiah chapter 53, verses 6 to 9. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of, of our peace was upon him, and by his stripe we are healed. All we are like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. 
and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the flock, as a sheep before it shears is silent. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who will declare this generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people, he was stricken and they made his grave with the wicked, but the riches at his death, because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Let me tell you something about Jesus and how much he loved us and how much he suffered for us all on that cross. No human being in the entire world who were ever created by God Whatever he was created in the past, created today, or will in the future, will ever suffer as much as Jesus Christ did on the cross. Let me tell you why that is. Christ, who was sinless, became sin, carried on his shoulder every sin known to man that each and every one of us has committed many times over pay the ransom on our behalf so we do not have to go through that terrible punishment but to be saved if we were to be punished for sins we would only be paying for the ones we've done we will not be punished for someone else's sins let alone every man's sins but jesus christ did and that is why he suffered so much on the cross. He not only gave his life for his friends, he also gave it his life for his enemy as well. How many of us would give our life for our enemy? No one that I have ever heard has done that, but only him alone did it for us all. Another way that he suffered so much, and I think will be the most terrible one, is that he was separated from his father and abandoned. That would be the most excruciating pain of suffering than any other kind of suffering that you can imagine. It is like us being separated from our loved ones million times over. One thing we must not forget, but do remember also that God the Father was also suffering, seeing his son on that cross, suffering so much, and let it happen, and did nothing to come to save him. Sure show how much God loved us, the world, that he was, was willing to give his only begotten son to die for us, so we can be saved from our sin and have eternal life. Where well, we should have been on that cross, not Jesus Christ, but it was the only way. No other method or any other way could have been done what Jesus Christ did on us to save mankind from their sins. John chapter 15, verse 13. Greater love has no other love than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. Now, do you not think he deserved from us respect, praise, honor, and glory, and be loved by all, and for us to give for him to the max? Glory and praise to him, our Lord, and God, Jesus Christ, our Savior, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the judge of judges, the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. I'm not here to represent any denomination or a specific religion. I'm here to represent Jesus Christ, the one who died for you and me, the one who shed his blood for us on the cross, 
the one who called all men everywhere to repent. I am here to preach about the name of Jesus Christ, where the Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things are made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. Jesus Christ is your Creator. Romans chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. But God commands us His love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, much more than being now justified by His love. We shall be saved from wrath through Him. Jesus Christ is our Creator and Savior. Jesus paid your way to heaven for you. By receiving him as your savior, you will be receiving God's only means of salvation for you. Are you willing to forsake your righteousness and receive Jesus Christ as your savior, your only hope for salvation? Romans chapter 10 verses 13 says, who shall uh, ever call up about the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt ch ch believe in thy heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Are you willing to forsake your own righteousness and trust in Jesus Christ alone? He will save you just as he promised. Why not first receive him today and trust in him to give you a better way of life? And the same Jesus Christ, even though he died at the hands of the sinners, that was not the end of the story. The Lord Jesus Christ three days later, rose from the grave, defeating death, defeating sin, defeating the grave. He spoke to the disciple that appeared many over a period of 40 days, sometime even to 500 at one time. And this Jesus Christ ascended to the Father and now is sitting at the right hand of the Father interceding for saints. And this same Jesus Christ will return someday to judge the quick and the dead. The same Jesus Christ will return someday to uh, uh, re release Israel right uh, upon sinner. The Bible said in Second Second Thessalonians chapter one, verses seven to 10, Lord Jesus has revealed from him, from heaven, for his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. <laughs> John chapter five, verses 28 and 29. Do not marvel at this, for the hour has come in which all who are in the grave will hear.
ask you, <clears throat> friends, ask yourself these questions today. Are you righteous or are you sinful? Are you living a holy life, a blameless life, a life above reproach, or a life that is wicked and sinful and ungodly? But God does not want you to be in the darkness. He wants you to come into the light. He wants you to see yourself in truth today, to see yourself as God sees you, to look in the mirror of God's words and know the full undisclosed truth about yourself. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor immorality, sexual immorality, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Nothing is worth going to hell forever for, friends. A little pleasure you get for a little season, a little pleasure you get for your sexual immorality is not worth, worth to go to a burning lake of fire and suffer a fire. But that is what is going to happen to you if you continue going down that, that path of a sinful lifestyle. So please, friends, I beg of you, stop sinning before it is too late. Come to Jesus Christ. The Bible says, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Are you right with God? Are you ready to face Jesus on Judgment Day? What would Jesus say to you on that day? Will he say to you, in Matthew chapter 25, verses 21, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you rulers over many things. <laughs> Enter into the joy of your Lord. Or will he say, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 23, And, and then I will declare to them I never knew you. Depart from me, you worker who practice lawlessness, and be cast into heaven, furnace of fire, where there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. <laughs> what does Jesus mean? You must be born again. It means to repent with a contrite heart. Say you are really sorry you have sinned against God, and you do not want to sin anymore and you want to be right with God. It also means to make a 180 degrees turn from the direction you are going and strive to the direction of perfection. It means to love things you hated before, to do before, and to hate things you love, you love to do before. What it means also is to change your mind. It means to stop fornicating, stop having sex outside of marriage, stop porn watching, stop pop smoking and taking hard drugs, stop lusting, stop, stop sport idolatry, stop, stop idolizing seniors and movie actors and actresses, stopping, stop dressing immodestly, stop listening to bad songs, Stop getting drunk. Stop hating your brothers. Stop taking birth control pills. Stop divorcing. Stop adulterating. Stop abortion. Stop killing your babies. Stop homosexuality activity. Stop supporting all kinds of sin. Stop lusting. Stop use, using God's name in vain. Stop stealing. Stop watching too much TV. Stop playing too many video games. It means totally live every day with God and have a constant relationship with Him. Every day 
that you have, like you have a relationship with your wife, husband, family members, friendly members and members. God bless you, sir. Have a good day. In Hebrew chapter 9, verse 27, in us it is appointed for man to die once, but after this, the judgment. The fact is that every one of us is going to die one day, and we are going to stand in front of Jesus to give an account of our doing, and he will judge us our life. The Jesus of the Bible I'm talking about is not the Jesus with the little letter J you invented in your mind that will be your judge. It is Jesus Christ with the capital letter J, the mediator in between man and God the Father. All will you do on that day standing before a holy and righteous God are you ready to meet God? I am afraid not too many are. The questions are to ask yourself, where will your soul spend eternity? Heaven or in hell? Only two places. Make sure you pick the right choice. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14, Enter by the narrow gate, for the wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who in, go in by it. Because now is narrow the gate, and difficulty is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. If I see the people by here passing by, would be a vision of the main gate of heaven, where the same amount of people entering the kingdom of heaven. How glorious and wonderful would it be for God seeing so many of his creation are in entry in heaven, are saved every second. But what I visualize is unfortunately one or two are entering the gate about once a day or a week or once a month. That is why I believe that most people here are walking by me are on the broad road of life which will lead them to hell. Matthew chapter 22 verses 14 For many are called but few are chosen. If I must put a percentage of number of how many are not saved, I will have to say between 75 and 80 percent of the world population are on the way to hell. That is a scary thought. There are millions of ways to go to hell, but there's only one way to make it to heaven. It is not God's will to any should perish, not God's will to anyone to go to hell, but God is willing to sacrifice and to long suffering toward us, and that now should not perish, but should all should come to repentance. Today in our society, it is the other way around. We serve man before, before we serve God. We admire more his creation than, than they glorify his creation. We are so compassionate, loving, and caring, and understanding toward people we know. And despite the kind of sinful lifestyle they lead, we put so much emphasis on solving their suffering and plight on their, on their sickness. But we're not so much concerned to save their soul for, for the afterlife. Where is the love? We do not even think one second that God love some compassion, loving, caring, and understanding on all of us. We do not give even him the time of day to honor him, to glorify him, and to praise him. He also has feeling just like us, so why not give him what he deserves? He is completely ignored. Why are we hurting him so much? He is bullied left and right. His name is cursed and blasphemed in the most despicable way. We do not give him his right, which he, he rightly deserved. We raise our fists at him 
and tell them where you will not rule over me, laying me for all the troubles of the world, which we are the one who should be blamed for causing it. We do not respect him. We make jokes about him. It is like we are crucifying him again. Do you know who the most hated man in the world is? It is Jesus Christ. Is this the way we should treat him, especially what he did for us on the cross? And him continuing giving us the food we need in our daily life so we do not go hungry or thirsty? We should be ashamed of ourselves. But one day, this patient is going to boil over. He will come and put an end to it. You better be right with God on that day. Oh, you are in big trouble with God. What a Bible believer, Bible obeying, born again Christian does, he will not sit by it and take it anymore. And seeing him being treated that way, he will come and take him and would want him to be his friend forever. And when he sees him being beaten up, he will immediately come to his rescue and save him. He himself will give his life for him and not forget for what he has done for him on that cross. In fact, he will go and tell the whole world that this Jesus Christ saved his life and that she should believe in him and love him as much as, as he loved him. The way I see it, I, how he is treated, makes me angry. I cannot go up, put up with this. That is why I am here to tell you what he has done for me. I will defend him, speak his name honorably throughout the whole world, show that I am not ashamed of him and his word, and how much I love him for what he did for me. And because he loved me for first, I want to love him back. I want to live for that family in this kingdom and be adopted by him and call God the Father, my Father, Abba, as well, and want to be his adopted son. Every one of you should do the same. Can you realize how many sins are being done every second? And he sees them all. How hor horrible, especially a holy God, to witness many being tortured, decapitated, you mutilated, raped, molested, killed, and all the different sins of the world that are, are an abomination to him are done in front of his eyes by the million. I ask how he can continue taking this. No one can stand this to see these things, atrocity being done constantly, and everyone would want this to end immediately but God is so patient and long-suffering who hopes that people would change their ways and come to repentance you cannot say he has not given us many chances and warning to repent because there will be a day he will end it in the future where you want him to end it now I am telling you there is no other religion can save you Act chapter 4 Verse, verse 12, 12, there is salvation, no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. The name is Jesus. John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No one comes to the Father except through me. It was only take one sin to send us to hell. Just using God's name in vain will all send us to hell. I hear wherever I go, and very often, and it is quite common these days to hear from many people, especially Catholics and Christians, he keeps saying, OMG, GD, OD, holy this and holy that. Just that is enough to send anyone to hell. 
They do not know, they, they do not use his name in reverence, but they use it as a cuss word. God will not find us guiltless on this one. It is one of the Ten Commandments. In fact, it is the second one. He says, Thou shall not use my name in vain. We should be very extremely careful using these words. We will have to give an account on the judgment for our idle words, thoughts, and deeds. So please, friends, I plead with you, come to Christ, repent of your sins, and be perfect and holy, like your heavenly Father is holy and perfect. Once you repent and are born again, you become a new creature and are called the sons and daughters of God. You become a saint in the eyes of God. God commands you to repent today, not tomorrow, but today. Today is the day of salvation because tomorrow will be too late. You cannot hide from your sin. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13, And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked, and opens to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. We Christians have a duty to warn our neighbors of their sinful ways and to tell them to come to consequence that they will come unto them if they do not repent and to tell them to if they do not want to change damnation well hellfire will come to them in the end if we as christians fail to warn them we will have to give an account to jesus on our day of judgment to one and save it from damnation that is true love it is the same kind of love that jesus christ gave us which is the agape love the love that does not ask anything back in return can we not show some love to our neighbors as well the same way jesus did ezekiel chapter 3 verses 18 and 19 when i say to the wicked you shall surely die and you give him no warning, no speak to warning the wicked from his wicked ways to save his life. That same wicked man shall die in his equity. But it is blood will I will require of your on your hand. Yet if you warn him the wicked, and he does not turn from your wicked ways, nor from his wicked ways, you shall die in his iniquity. But you shall have deliver your soul. Many here will say, I am preaching hate, just a minute. I will tell you are half right in some way. I am preaching to hate sin and hate Satan, but to love God and your neighbors. Okay. Hello, how are you? Well, thank you, how are you? Not bad, yourself? Good. My name's Emily, I'm here with Bylaw. I'm here to let you know you're not allowed to be using any sound reamplification devices. Okay. Have you spoken with any of our officers before? I did, yes, I did. So you're aware that you were I'm aware with... of it, but I told him to give me the information, and I gave him my email and tell me to send me everything that I need to know. I never yeah. got any re re reply from him so at all. So you have a duty as, as a citizen to be aware of the bylaws. They're publicly available. Okay. They're online. Mm -hmm. And uh, because you know and you've been made aware that you're not allowed to have any sound reproduction devices, mm -hmm. I'm going to need you to shut it down right now. All right. Can I lower it down, though? No. It needs okay. to be completely I'll off. I'll shut it down. But can I s still speak with my own voice? You can speak with your own voice, okay. but you need to know we cannot keep getting these complaints. We know that you are fully aware that you are violating the bylaw. I respect your desire to spread the word. Unfortunately, you have to do so within parameters that don't disrupt folks trying to eat or folks trying to walk. But what about our freedom of free speech? You have free speech by all okay. means to speak, okay. not to amplify, not to broadcast sound in the bylaw. But how can I preach to everybody's around me? You if can I only want preach to preach to those who can hear you but if I want to preach to many people who's around me, how can I do that? You can't. Good. Well, that's, I lose my free speech there. No. Free speech is your ability to say whatever you'd like without getting prosecuted, without getting denied entry, without... Yes, that's what I'm doing. Nope. You are using a sound reamplication. Yeah, but if I don't use my sound amplification. I won't use it. All right. I'll, I'll respect the law for that. Because I'm required... Are you going to respect the law tomorrow and the day after that? Or are we going to keep getting these calls? Or I'll get a license. 
Can I get a license? No, not for what you're doing. Not for amplification? No, not during the middle of the day in the Byward Market. But that's one. funny, I hear a lot of people with sound system with loud, loud music, nobody says anything about it. How do you know nobody's saying anything about that? Because it's been going on and on. People say things about you, you go on and on. Yes, but you know, just because I'm the one who's preaching good to God's word, no. that's why you have complaints. Yes, you do. No, it's not. Yes. I can assure you I've dealt with many noise complaints in the same vicinity for speakers. Yeah, but for this vehicles. this particular one is because of the word of God I'm preaching. No, it's because you're violating the noise bylaw. Even if I say it I, with, without the application, I will get some complaints. They will call the, the police officers for that one. Okay, and then they will tell them that you're not in violation of any of the noise bylaws here. I'm okay. here to let you know right. this cannot keep happening. Okay. Okay? Okay. What's your name, by the way? My name is Emily. Allison? Emily. Emily. Yeah. Nice to meet you, Emily. Nice to meet you God as well. God bless you. Thank you. And I... So yeah, I need you. I need to have it on good faith that you won't continue okay, to do this sure. because right. I know that you've spoken with us before. Yes, but I just get, like I said, I didn't get any report from from him uh, uh, after that, and I said, well, maybe maybe he hasn't found any reason for giving me no, because he could possible. could find anything. No, I can assure you that there there's no the, the use of sound reapplication devices is prohibited in public spaces. So this is, constitutes anything on a highway or a public space, which this very much is, this is an infraction. All right, then if I see anybody with loudspeakers, I guess I should complain yeah, about that. Yeah, feel free to call through on one. In the meantime, uh, can I get you to take that sound reamplification device off? Uh, sure, okay, yeah. Are you a Christian? No. Not? Well. Well, I wish you would be a Christian. I wish you would believe in Jesus Christ because we're all going to see him one day. And this COVID-19 uh, is probably a sign of what's coming. And that's proof enough, it's been predicted in the Bible what's coming in the future, and we're starting to see that. So Emily, I wish you would start thinking about it, believing in it. And uh, I know you're doing your job, I respect your job, and I have to respect the law because it's required. But one thing I don't like is that we're well, losing my free speech of assembly, my free speech of uh, expressing my religion in public, my God giving law or commandment that he asked me to go out and preach to the whole world and preach him to be asked him to become disciples. You're stopping me from doing that. So you're going against God's law. And this I cannot do what I'm, I'm commanded by Jesus Christ to do as a Christian, to obey his no law. I have problem with the words you're saying. It's the device that you're using to amplify. But even that, even that, even that I should be able. No, because you're impacting everybody else's uh, yes, in but the there's a lot of things that other people do and packs about my life, but I don't complain because I say they have the rights to do whatever they want. I will never tell anybody you're not allowed to do that. If you want to have music on, go ahead, have music on. Why should you have anybody to complain about it? That's only an excuse because I'm preaching the Bible. You wouldn't hear anybody calling you to, to for other reason, but oh, no, that, that reason. I do get other folks calling me. Well, I don't think you get it as much. And first of all, you probably don't hear too many people like me who does it. As a matter of fact, I'm one of the rare. You don't see too many street preachers going out and disturbing the, the, the gospel. It's just because people don't like what I'm saying. I'm here to save lives, their soul. Isn't that not a beautiful thing to think about that, to love my neighbor that way, instead of pampering me to do what my duties require from Jesus Christ? Isn't that not unlawful on your part of the law? And in God's eyes, it is. You're obeying man's law, but you don't obey God's law. God asked me to go out and preach to the whole world. 
Make disciples and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And teach them to everything that, that they, I command you to do. That's what I'm doing. I'm obeying my God. Command them. So yeah, like I said before, I have no issue with the words itself that you're saying. It's only the sound reamplification device. I'm going to make But no even that, even that, it's... Because the Bible tells, go out and preach the whole word. Sound your trumpet. Yell and speak out loud. How can I expect to, 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 to get to so many people all I want? I mean, it's fine to have a one-to-one -one conversation with one person, but I, I'm, I'm almost wasting my time. I wish, I, my goal is to, to try to reach as many people as possible, even to you. Yeah. I would preach to you very well, and if you're willing to understand it, to wait and to hear my words. You're just, I love you just as much as anybody else. You're just, you're creating God's image, you're just like anybody else. I love you just as much as anybody else. This is what love is all about. It's to, to have, to, to want the best for your neighbor. God says, go out to preach. God says, uh, Jesus was asked, who, what is the greatest commandment? He said, love thy God, with all your mind, soul, and strength. And the second one, which is the, the, the same, is to love your neighbor. You're my neighbor. I love you. I want you to go to heaven. I believe in life after death. You probably don't, but you will eventually find out. And I don't want that to happen to you when it's too late. That would be awful. Just awful. And I appreciate uh, your willingness to work with me here. I will have to note down that you've been uh, dutifully informed regarding... Can you give me the uh, site or the website where it says I can? Yep. So, uh, Ottawa.ca has a, a link that you can, a link you can click that details all of the bylaws. So should, you can do it that way and look yeah. up the noise bylaw. Mm -hmm. If it would be easier for you to just Google noise bylaw, it has a specific section in it regarding to noise reamplification devices. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is the one that I would be. Should you? I appreciate your willingness to work with me here. If you weren't willing to, that would be the subsection under which I would have to find you. So. What about when you have some activity on? on Spark Street Mall when they have beer fest or a barbecue fest or things like that. Yeah, Don't so they have music? Events by the city. Those pardon? events are licensed by the city. They generate revenue for local businesses. They have permits that the city So grants. they can have amplifying system then? Yes, because it's an event that's granted by the city. You see, that's discrimination. It's not discrimination, sir. Well, if they are able to do and I can't, that's discrimination. Why can I not pay for license then? Because this is a public event that is uh, one one individual doing one thing. It's a public event. Yeah, but it's way. one individual making everything a public event. Okay. And an event such as the Spark Street Rib Fest or Barbecue Fest, that's a city sanctioned event. Businesses and organizations come what, together. What if there was a hundred street preachers here at the same time? Well, then it would still not be sanctioned by the city. Yeah, uh, that, that's discrimination. That's pure and simple discrimination. If you're interested in setting up an event, I invite you to connect with the mayor or your city councillor to see if you can get the same privileges afforded to you as they do as businesses. Well, I don't think the mayor would help me at all because he's discriminating. Because the mayor is supposed to represent every individual, whatever their beliefs are, mm -hmm. no matter what. That's what the mayor is. But he is biased to the pro-life community. He wouldn't even put a pro-life flag on the pole at the city hall, but yet he will have a gay pride parade flag there. Why is that? Isn't that discrimination? If he's the mayor to represent everyone, he should give us the, our rights as well to put a pro-life flag on the uh, on the uh, on the, the flagpole. It seems as though the scope of this conversation has gone beyond my duties here. I came to invite you to stop using the sound reamplification. Right. I appreciate that you've done that for me. If I get another call that it starts back up again, I'm going to have to pursue further enforcement action. Well, okay, I hope that next person, if I'm going to stay here and preach with my own voice, yep. and somebody else calls you again and says, listen, this guy is speaking too loud. Can you come? Or he's, he's going to lie to me, or he's going to lie to you, he's going to say, hey, he's using this amplification, and you come. That would be awful in a way to ask you to come, and when he was lying about it, that would not be fair for you to, to ask you to come back, because a lot of people will lie, especially when, when it comes to this. They lie all the time. Okay. Lie all the time. Okay. Anyway, I, I wish you good luck. Okay. God Thank bless you. you, and stay safe, okay? Thank you.
how are you? Nice seeing you again. Yeah. What's up? What have you been doing? Broke, broke. All bell is gone. No money to buy food, no money to rent. Yeah. I'm paying my rent, I'm paying everything. Yeah. Yeah, I'm broke. Are you Lebanese? Huh? Are you Lebanese? Yeah, you asked me last time. I'm Lebanese. I'm Jesus. No. I'm Jesus a Lebanese. Are you a Christian? Yeah. Yeah? What do you do about about your life? No more. It's gone. Family died. Yeah. How are you? Long time no see you. Last time I see you here. You. Yeah, right over there in the shade. Yeah, I you know. I can't be there because of the... Uh, they blocked my air. They they blocked my area. Why you want a super? Team? What the one that you talking about? Mm -hmm. Yes, the bylaw officer told me I cannot use my amplification. I could preach without my amplification, uh, though. Tell them, well, if I tell them that, they're gonna arrest me. I better not. No, I don't. I don't want to say bad words. I'm not supposed to say bad words. He's crazy. What the one? Leave him free for you. <laughs> Well, it's my freedom of speech, freedom of my religion. You give me fine, you make money, that's fine. You take hundred dollars, you take fine there. Uh, I know this people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Let me see if I got any money for you. Thank you, boss. I usually don't carry cash, eh? Like last time I gave you some money, you went and bought some food? Uh, yeah, no. Hey? You didn't get any drugs? No way. God, you killed me. I'm never... <laughs> Stomach anyway. first. Uh, look at that, I don't have any money. I'm out of money today. I usually carry my credit card, that's the thing, or my debit card. Sure. What's your name, by the way? My name's Simon. Simon. Oh yeah, that's right. No, anyway, Simon. Nothing. Nothing. I don't have any money. I have no money with me on me. I Where's usually. Your bank machine. <laughs> no, I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not finished preaching. I'm gonna preach again. I want to finish my preaching. And after that, I'll leave. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. All right. Take it easy. Nice have a good day. Okay. The love I have for my neighbors, I want them to, I want to speak the truth and to tell it what you need to hear and what you want to hear.
Ja, ja, The Bible says, the Bible says, all men to repent because there's coming a, a day where God will judge the world in righteousness. Are you ready to stand before God? Are you ready to give an account for every thought, words, and deeds? Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 13 and 14 says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. You need to deal for that fact, the fact God will bring every word into the judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. So if you're living in sin right now, you are not ready to meet God. You're not ready to stand before God to give an account of your life. If you're in rebellion to, to Him, Jesus said in Matthew 7, in verse 13, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad way is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who, who go in by it. And narrow is the gate, and difficulty is the way which leads to life. And there are few 
who will find it? Yes, are you a part of the many or are you a part of the few? You can do know them that question by looking at that life. Are you living for Jesus Christ or for yourself? If you're living for yourself, you're on the wide road to destruction. You need to enter by narrow gate. Your name is Jesus Christ. He says, I am the door, I am the gate. Thank you very much, everybody. Give me the opportunity to go preach to you the good words. The word of Jesus Christ. God bless you all and have a good day.